Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Honky Tonk Women. Now I had a request from Victor Hill to have a go at Honky Tonk Women and I thought that would be an interesting challenge. Um, it's a song that everybody knows. It was a hit in 1969, a number one hit both in the UK and the US. And um, it's interesting because it's full of guitar riffs and I want to see what, if anything, uh, we can learn from these guitar riffs. Whether we should not ignore them, copy them or what. So, um, we're going to go through... I'll f first of all show you the easiest possible version uh, the second one, I will try and copy the rhythm guitar and we'll look at how we can approach a solo. So we're going to start off with the simplest possible version and this basically involves um, some kind of rhythm playing two note chords. Um, and I do have a video coming up all about two note chords so some of you will have lots of experience as to how to choose those two notes for any particular chord but um, for those of you that don't, there'll be a video um, either already just done or just about to come out about how to select those notes. So the chords we've got G, C, D and A and basically we have to find nice easy two note chords for those and some kind of rhythm. So what we've got uh, is for a G, a G with a B above it, third finger and first finger. Uh, for a C we've got a C on the A string with an E below it. Uh, for the A chord, we've got an A note on the open A with an E below it. And for the D chord, we've got a D on the A string with an F sharp below it. So then we just need some kind of rhythm. And um, a really simple rhythm we can use is... So let's see what that sounds like with the backing. So we're going to play when the verse comes in. We've got the two bars drums, then we've got four bars guitar, and then the verse starts, and that's where we'll start. One, two, three, four. good. There's a lot of things wrong with it. Uh, one thing is the rhythm um, is far too simplistic. Uh, there's a lot of different rhythms you could do, uh, more interesting rhythms. And the, the note pairs, you've got a whole load more different choices. Um, so you wouldn't uh, need to stick with the same two notes for each time a chord came up. Um, but it, that's, a, that's a kind of a basic thing that would work. Uh, before we go any further, you have to think about uh, who you're performing this with. Uh, I would say the most likely scenario is you're playing this with an acoustic guitarist, singer, and he's strumming. He's not doing any of the fancy Keith Richards or Mick Taylor uh, guitar riffs. So in that case, uh, you can do something a bit more fancy than he's doing or that we've just done there. And that's something we'll come to uh, uh, in a bit. Uh, but um, yes, so different rhythms and different note pairs will make it more interesting and vary the chorus from the verse so that the two sound different. Um, there I did go up for the chorus, um, ch chose a higher pair and that's often a good idea but you can vary the rhythm as it changes as well. <coughs> now if it comes to doing uh, the easiest possible solo then 
quick um, scale to use is the G major pentatonic scale. If you extend that up and down so that we're not just using one octave, uh, but we're going to the top of the first position and the bottom of the first position, then we've got. That will work uh, more or less all the way through the chords. So let's just hear what that's going to sound like. Here we go. That worked reasonably well. Uh, when it came to the A chord uh, in particular, I had to dodge a bit and the C chord. So there are notes within that pentatonic which fit and your ear should be able to tell you what they are. Um, if you play some of the wrong notes which are in the pentatonic scale but don't fit the chord, then you'll soon realise and uh, you could probably get away with it by just um, <laughs> quickly moving to another note. Um, but we'll look at a slightly more sophisticated approach a bit later on. Now, we've got some really nice guitar licks going on um, from Keith Richards and Mick Taylor. And um, perhaps too many. And I have to say that, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, British social history, there was a lot of uh, industrial overmanning in the 1960s, which meant too many people doing the same jobs. And in this song, uh, you do get an example of that with uh, both guitarists uh, having a go and uh, not really sticking to their job. So if you're trying to actually pick out um, what is the rhythm guitar part, you have a, a difficult job because they're both playing rhythm and lead at the same time. But anyway, um, the most interesting lick, which is if you learn nothing else from this video, it's worth learning this lick, is... The, uh, for, for, for the G chord, the G note with the third above it, and then putting, putting a second finger to play what is the fourth of the chord. That gives you a really nice lick. That's a G chord. The C chord, exactly the same. The C, C note for the root, the third above it, and then put your second finger down to give you the fourth. So that's kind of what you might call a suspended fourth. And then for the A chord, um, the root with your fourth finger, second finger which is the third above it. And that obviously is a lot harder because uh, that's stretched for the fourth finger, difficult to keep that in tune. And then the same for the D chord, fourth finger playing a D. So that lick you can put in more or less where you want, or all the time. And I think we'll just try playing all the way through the verse, uh, just using that lick.
And if you played that behind your acoustic guitarist, uh, then he'd be quite impressed and the audience would probably recognise the fact that you were playing some of those guitar licks, um, which would be a good thing. Now let's look at an approximation to the actual uh, rhythm guitar part. Um, some of which is going to be appropriate and some of which won't work so well. Um, I'll go through it for bit by bit to start with. So we're going to start off with a, a very syncopated um, introduction. So we're going, uh, starting where the drums are, we're going to come in one beat before the, ver before the intro. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <coughs> So that's your intro, and then um, on the verse, we're going to do a G with an open G below it. Here's that lick. That's a little bit of the G minor blues scale. Then um, the A lick and the D. Coming into the chorus, we've got the uh, a tricky bit. So this is all third position, and we're droning on the across the two strings. Then it's into uh, the chorus, and we've got. So that phrase is all third position. Uh, the the melody is. Keeping the first finger down, uh, that first finger on the G is down there the whole time, and that's giving us these nice drones. Then carrying on, then a little lick to finish. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so let's hear all of that with the backing. So that's an approximation of the um, original guitar part. Um, and if you were working with this acoustic guitarist, some of that will certainly work. Uh, in fact, all of it would probably work, but some of it is probably more difficult than you need, need to do it. If you are playing in a, let's say, a five-piece band and um, you had a guitarist, an electric guitarist, playing rhythm, then he would get extremely annoyed with me playing that. <laughs> I play in a covers band where we do a lot of rock covers and I often learn the guitar parts and if I play exactly what the guitarist is playing he gets really annoyed with me and rightly. So uh, cho choose carefully what you're going to do. Um, if there's drums then uh, these kind of cross rhythms are really helpful. If you've got no drums then uh, something perhaps quite a lot steadier might be a good idea unless your rhythm guitarist is rock solid. Now the solo, uh, to, to, to make a slightly better job of it than we made before we're going to use the G major blues scale. So it is the G major pentatonic 
with the addition of a flattened third. And I do have a video coming up very shortly, or already just out, about the major blues scale, uh, which will explain that a bit more. Uh, but we're not going to play it in first position, we're going to play it in third position, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, so uh, for that first octave, first finger. We've got some lower notes starting second finger here. Now the advantage of playing this in third position is that by putting your first finger across the G note and the D note, kind of like a capo and keeping it there. Then you get that lovely dirty sound um, and you can do those little slides which are going to drone against a single note. And then you get in a good imitation of what the guitars are doing. So a few licks that um, are actually occurring in that solo, uh, there's this one, one, two, three, four, which becomes and um, that's another guitar lick which becomes much fatter. Um, listening through the solo we get a very brief uh, delve into the minor blues scale. Um, that's certainly not going to fit all the time but it, it is nice to drop that in. You can do, as, as I would suggest you do, the same scale, the same G scale all the way through but an alternative is to um, change to, on the C chord to the C major blues scale and on the A chord to the A blues scale and on the D to the D blues scale. Um, so that will give you some variety. And I'll just show you this little ending lick. Uh, which is more or less the the proper guitar ending lick. One, two, three, four, one. So that would be a good thing to have ready right for the end. Now I'm going to give you a solo using these ideas in the third position using the major blues scale. change scales as we're going through. Starting with the G. Country Honk, recorded by the Rolling Stones the same year, but instead of in the studio, they went out onto the street um, and had car horns blaring in the background, and they had Byron Berlin, a great fit country fiddle player, and he played uh, a really nice solo um, and played through the song. So that's worth listening to. Uh, it's a di certainly a different um, approach to the one I've taken here, but well worth hearing. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, I can send you a copy of the licks and scales that I've been using if you subscribe and send me an email. 
And uh, if you learn nothing else, learn that um, suspended fourth lick and you'll find that useful throughout this song and probably in a few other uh, similar rock songs. Hope you enjoyed this. See you again soon.